it's Nina, Warthog Princess, and welcome back to another Pandora video. This video is going to go over the pieces that I talked about on my last video for the bracelet for my oldest niece that I didn't give to her. I kept the pieces instead. Longer story. Not going there. But I do have these pieces, and it just so happens that my eldest nephew, um, his wife just had a baby a month ago. So she's a month old, and they named her after me. Yay, it's so exciting. So now these are like my little bond for her. And then when she gets old enough, I will actually give her these pieces sort of saying, hey, like remember before you were born? Um, anyway, it's che cheesy little family tie-ins. I'm all about family. So here goes, let's build a bracelet. We have all the pieces right here. We have lots of charms to choose from. We're not gonna go into those, um, but we're gonna use some ones I've already pre-picked out. So we have a snake chain with the regular um, clip pieces in the middle. We may end up using those, in fact. And then this one has the heart charm, or the heart clasp, I mean. So it's just the heart shape, which is cool because it's my heart, it's my family, it's my niece. So I have that, I have a safety chain. This is a generic one, not generic per se, but it's one I liked and it actually is one of the cheaper ones, which I like also. Uh, because I was buying so many, but this one has hearts on it. So actually it's the one I would have picked anyways, price aside. So that's perfect as well. You can see where the heart is. I have two clips. I do like to do things in pairs. Everything has to be balanced. Um, these two are not perfectly balanced, but theme wise they kind of fit. So I have a pale pink flower clip and I have a little bow clip and it does have a little bit of bling on it. I know you really can't see the bow all that well just because the lighting is actually too good. I don't know, does that help? A little bit, you can see the bow. Anyway, so you'll see it on the bracelet shortly. So we have those two pieces. Um, we have a baby carriage, which is super cute, it's a bead. And then paired with that, because I don't have another piece, actually I'm just gonna use that little skinny or small Murano glass. And it's pink because it's a girl. And then I have these three pieces that are all the same except they say different things. One says sweet sister. Yes, of course I am. Um, one says loving aunt, which I am many times over. But also in this case, it's particularly purposeful. And then also I am a sweet niece. Now there wasn't one of these for a daughter or I would have that too um, because obviously that's all the parts of a person. Anyway, so I have those three. I have three other pink Murano glasses picked out. If you did not see it, I'll put the link below for the Murano glass video, which we went through all the pieces. But here are the three that I picked. So there's two that kind of balance each other with the bling, and then the darker with the, the, bit, the really fine glitter in the middle. So that'll kind of be the middle piece and then we'll work around it. The other piece, the final piece that I have, which is a little pacifier, it's like a little crystal pacifier and it has bling on the charm itself as well. So it's a nice little dangle. Um, silly for me to have that otherwise, but to me there's a story, as you know already, there's, a, there's always a story and this one has multiple stories in and of itself. I myself do not have any kids, um, but I, I love kids and I care very much about my family. And they're... Come on. She's such a nuisance when the door is open. Um, anyway, okay, so let's build a bracelet. So how do you build it? Well, you take your safety chain and first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna, these are all twist on, so you're gonna have to twist it on. It doesn't matter which end really, actually it does. One end is a fixed connection and the other end has a spinnable piece. And that's important, that needs to be on your outer end. So you're gonna take the fixed end and put that on. I almost forgot about that little tidbit. It's been a while. All right, so we'll just spin it through. You can spin the bracelet or you can spin the bead, but it spins all the way on. And you're gonna spin it all the way on to the threads at the far end of the bracelet, all the way to the clasp. And just gonna leave it there because that's the last piece and it's gonna go on at the end and that's your little safety chain. So there you go. Now we need to put these in order what we think, how we think we wanna lay them out. So I'm just gonna put them in a, what I think the order 
maybe should be and we'll see how it looks so everything's balanced I think we might we might have to move these because the clips have to go kind of in the middle okay I think I have a plan so let's just go with it and see how it comes out and if it doesn't come out I can always change it later it's um, one thing to make sure you lay them all out exactly how you're gonna put them on there because otherwise you get some facing one way and some facing the other and it's kind of a nuisance so unless you purposefully want that pay attention how you're doing it so for me they're all gonna face me yeah, oops as I put them on here and there we go um, on this piece by the way these ones they also have this little extra sort of like a charm on the charm and they have just a little piece of bling on them so it's kind of a nice little touch but all right so that first piece and we'll just put it all the way on right now then we're gonna go with the Murano everything as you can tell is symmetrical we're gonna leave the clips off because we can put those in later Ooh, I can already tell this, those clips are kind of, oh, this is going to be unbalanced. I'm not going to like this. We'll see. <laughs> I'm so picky about the symmetry that is sort of silly, but true. All right, so just spinning these on. Spin, 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 spin. There we go. And I'm not worried exactly where they fall when you first put them on because you're going to re-spin them and use your clips as you see fit. So you just try to get them on the bracelet and then we'll space them accordingly. So a lot of different spinning. As long as I keep holding the bracelet the same way and the charms are all lined up, they will all be appropriately faced and spaced. This one doesn't matter which way it faces. Oh, it does matter which way you spin it though. There we go. And you could say righty tidy, lefty loosey, but it depends on if you're spinning the chain. If you're spinning the chain, it's righty tidy. If you're spinning the charm, it's the opposite. Go figure. So go with whatever works for you. Okay, so we have all these pieces on here. And I think they will fit between the clips. So, I might, I think I might leave it just the way it is. Let's see how this comes out. It's a little asymmetrical because I've got a glass bead paired with a regular bead, but the pinks all match really nicely. And it does fit between the clips. So what I'm going to do to keep it from migrating all around is I'm just going to put these clips right on the clip spots. Oops. There we go. So you can screw these on like a regular bead, but why? You can just clip them. Clip them right onto their spots. And this will be a little tight in the middle, so I might end up changing this up. But for the moment, for demonstration purposes, it'll be great. Just put that on there. Clip it in place. Ta-da! Now I'm just gonna hook my, this is the reason why you have the, the swivel piece on this end, is because you're gonna have to put it on, and that chain has to be able to swivel to take out the turns. Otherwise your chain gets all kinked up. You can see it's not kinked, it's totally straight, because the swivel takes the load of that, if that makes sense. And you wanna go ahead and put it all the way on so that it's between the the threads and whatever the next thing is. So then when you go to put this on, you just slide your wrist through it, and then you can use that safety chain. If you watched my first video, I talked about it. So you just take your finger and slide it over and it pulls the other end to you so it's easier to clasp on there. Very helpful. Also, you won't lose any beads because they can't just migrate right off if, you're, if your bracelet came undone. I've never had one come undone though. They're pretty, pretty hefty clasps. So, this is our bracelet up close. Of course, you'd like to see it frontwards. So we have the two matching clips paired anyways, not matching. And then you have two of the family ones. We've got the baby carriage and the pink bead. We've got two Muranos. We've got these two paired, the loving ant and the pacifier. And then in the middle, we have that darker glitter Murano. 
So that is my commemoration of my little baby niece. And she's got my name, her middle name. So anyways, lovely. And I will wear that when I go to meet her, which was supposed to be this week coming up. But soon, soon, as soon as Corona goes away a little bit um, and she's healthy and I'm healthy and it makes sense to travel. So in the meantime, I can think of her and, and definitely keep in touch with the family. So thanks for watching. That is how you build a bracelet in general. And obviously this one was with a purpose, so take care. Bye for now.